Question 16. We want to determine the smallest volume in milliliters that will be accepted where bottles with a volume at or below the 20th percentile are rejected. We can draw a picture to represent this information. So we want to determine K, but first we need to find the standard deviation of the volume of the bottles. In the question, we are told that 35% of bottles contain 593 milliliters of soft drink or more. If we convert this to a Z score, we get 593 has a Z score of 0.385. This can now be used to evaluate the standard deviation. Thus, the standard deviation was found to be 5.19. We now have everything we need to calculate K. We want to determine K for a specific area and thus we need to use inverse normal. So, the smallest value that will be accepted is 587 millilitres to the nearest milliliter. Question 17. We want to determine the sample size required such that the one point estimate is correct to within plus or minus 0.02 of the population proportion with 95% confidence. This tells us that our margin of error is 0.02. So we can solve for n in the following equation. p hat can be evaluated by x divided by n and thus If we rearrange our equation a little bit, you could continue to solve this by hand or find n using the equation solver. Therefore, we require a sample of 630 lecturers. Question 18. To solve this problem, draw a straight line connecting the points B and D. By determining the length of BD, we will be able to calculate DC and hence determine the perimeter of the quadrilateral. In the triangle ABD, we can use the cosine rule to work out the length BD. As we are working in degrees, we need to check that our calculator is set to degrees, not radians.
Using the equation solver, we can work out BD. Recall that the variable we wish to solve for is set to zero and that we need to check our upper and lower values in the context of the question. Here, we have set the lower value equal to zero, as we cannot have a negative length. Therefore, BD was found to be 10.142 centimetres. Using triangle BCD, we can now solve for the length CD. Again, we can use the cosine rule and the equation app. Therefore, CD is equal to 11.487 centimetres. Thus, the perimeter is 4.1 plus 5.4 plus 7.6 plus 11.487, which is equal to 28. 0.587 centimetres. Question 19. We are given some information about a drive we take and are asked to determine how much time we spend driving downhill. Given that speed is equal to distance over time and we are told that our average speed is 40 kilometres per hour, we will need to calculate how far we travel downhill. This is where the length of the curve formula will be useful. After reading all the information in the question, we can represent our drive on a Cartesian plane, starting at the point negative 10 d of negative 10 and ending at 10 d of 10. Note that the horizontal distance x is measured in kilometres, but d of x is measured in metres. To be able to measure the length of our drive in units that we understand, we need the horizontal and vertical dimensions to be the same. So we will use the function f of x is equal to d of x divided by a thousand. That is, Our vertical distance above sea level is now also measured in kilometres. Let's now graph our path and see what it looks like. Maybe it will be all downhill, but probably not. We will set our view window to have an x min of negative 11 and an x max of 11. We will now use zoom auto to get a look at our graph. Zoom auto is found by pressing F2 and F5. So it looks like we drive downhill from the start, and at some point after x equals zero, start driving uphill. We need to determine where f of x goes from decreasing to increasing. To do this, we will look for where the derivative of f of x goes from negative to positive as follows.
Right, so we have a negative slope until x is equal to 1.5. Thus, we can see that we drive downhill from x equals negative 10 to x equals 1.5. We can now determine how far we drive downhill using the length of the curve formula that was supplied in the question. We need to calculate We can calculate this in the run mode. Instead of manually typing in f dash of x, we can make use of where we typed it in in the graph menu. To enter in our derivative, we go vars, graph, and y, in our case, 2. Thus, the length of our drive downhill was 11.5 kilometres. And so, the time spent travelling downhill is given by the distance travelled divided by the average speed. So, the time spent driving downhill is 17.25 minutes. Question 20. We are given two independent samples and asked to calculate a 99% confidence interval for the difference of two proportions and to determine whether or not drink preference is associated with the town people live in. The two proportions we want to compare are either the proportion of tea drinkers in town A compared to town B or the proportion of coffee drinkers in town A compared to town B. We will choose T. Let P1 equal the proportion of town A who prefer tea. Let P2 equal the proportion of town B who prefer T. In the table, we can see that the sample size for town A is 216 people and for town B, 257. So, N1 is equal to 216 and N2 is equal to 257. Furthermore, the number of people in the sample who prefer tea in town A is 111, while 150 people prefer tea in town B. Therefore, the proportions of people who drink tea in town A and B can be evaluated as follows. We now have almost everything needed to be able to use the formula above. The last thing needed is the value of z for a 99% confidence interval. This can be found using the standard normal distribution and the inverse normal option on the calculator. So, Z is equal to 2.576. We can now calculate our confidence interval. To reduce the chance of typos in our calculation, we will make use of the calculator's ability to assign a numerical value to a letter. Let's assign P1 hat as A. This can be done as follows. P2 hat can be assigned to B. We will assign 
2.5762Z. Our confidence interval can now be evaluated as follows. So the lower bound of our confidence interval is negative 0.187. Instead of re-entering our confidence interval to find the upper bound, we will simply edit what we have already entered and just change the second subtraction to an addition. Thus, the 99% confidence interval for the difference between P1 and P2 is from negative 0.187 to 0.0483. In this question, we are told that if the confidence interval does not contain zero, there is evidence to suggest that the two proportions are not equal. As our confidence interval contains zero, we do not have the required evidence to say that the two proportions are different, i.e. we cannot conclude that the preference for drinking tea is associated with where the person lives.